Hello world, it's Dave again, and I got an interesting video for you here on gender roles in Japan. I think it's a really, really interesting topic, and it was sparked by the individual kind enough to write me was Random Nestle. Uh, he's a 17-year-old guy from Finland, and he just generally likes to learn about different cultures. He's recently been very interested in Japan, and he's curious about gender roles in contemporary Japan, and he had a few questions for me that I guess were kind of floating around my head. It's just something I've never thought to, to put down to a video here, but they're really good. So I'll read you kind of the gist of his email here where he says, okay, this is a good email. He says, is the traditional family structure where the man is the breadwinner and the woman stays at home still strong? Or is it changing to a more Western family structure where both the wife and husband do work and house chores and so on and so forth? Um, let's see what else. Um, uh, which is more common in your opinion, double income or single income households? And are the younger generations more conforming to these, this chain or more conforming uh, to the old standard or are they reforming into these new changes? You know, do they have an interest in it, it changing like it is or do they want to continue kind of the, the old guard? Um, let's see. He's got other questions here. Um, okay. This one caught my attention. He says of this, he sent me a whole bunch of links as well about studies that he's been looking at. So it says, this one caught my attention. Is the amount of Japanese men who want their wife to stay at home really so low? Um, as this article suggests that not that many Japanese men want their, their wives to stay at home. Um, let's see. Oh, and one more thing. Do you think that Japan will someday be just as gender equal as Western countries, which really don't have any strong gender roles? That's a bold statement. Um, and yeah, thanks for reading this. So a big topic, one I'll spend a little bit of time on here, trying to go through each little uh, little thing that he brings up. So what's the first thing that I could approach here? Um, how much are, are things changing, I guess, is a really, really good question to start. You know, because traditionally, to understand Japan is to understand that it's a very male-centric patriarchal society um, where the man is fundamentally the breadwinner um, the women stay at home raise the children there's very there was very defined gender roles I guess you could say uh, in Japan and it worked they seem to be doing quite well you could say through through uh, through time they've done well enough their societies thrived so on and so forth but if you look at a lot of the research that my friend from Finland here has looked at, it does suggest, a lot of the research suggests that as they continually modernize and modernize, that this is changing. And so I guess the way that I answer this question from my perspective is to say, at what rate is it changing? Um, I think when you do a study on a topic, you inevitably... I think in some ways, especially a social interest topic, you find what you're looking for. So if you are looking for change, you go into Tokyo, one of the biggest cities in the entire world, and you ask a bunch of women. And I think statistically, in a very modern city, if you talk to a lot of women, they're going to tell you that they want change. But I would say the greater question is the rate at which the change is occurring. And I would suggest that Japan is a very slow to change culture, at least socially. I wouldn't say technologically because they, they've definitely, they were one of the few cultures that they didn't have any sort of um, time to get to know technology. When their country opened up the world, they went from, you know, like no electricity on their streets to like, you know, give it a decade or so, and suddenly there was electricity everywhere. So they're, they're used to rapid technological change, but not so much social change. I think you get more rapid social change in a country when you have to contend with a whole bunch of different social values. And that happens in uh, where you don't have so much of a monoculture, where you don't have just straight Japanese people. Canada is a perfect example where you're trying to appease a lot of different people. You'll undergo a lot of change trying to make sure that you get it right for everybody, whereas if you got the one people like in Japan, it's going to be a lot slower to change. The old guard is going to be a lot more reticent in uh, being replaced. And so absolutely, I would agree with this question or his, his wondering is, is it changing? I would say, yes, absolutely, it's changing. But I would say that Japan of any country in the world is probably going to be one of the slowest to change socially 
And when you look at a lot of these uh, these reports that you see, the, this person's gone out looking for social change and they found it where when you're practically on the ground, when you're practical and you're, you're just going from person to person, not so much looking for it, you can see how there's still very much that, that old way of living that is it's kind of commonplace. You know, these these things, and I think especially in Japan, take time to change. So yes, they are changing, but they're changing slower than you might think for the way that reports and studies seem to uh, to seem to give you a biased view. They seem to give you this like impression like Japan is changing super rapidly, and I don't think that's true. I think that it's changing a lot more slowly because um, it's just the impression I get when I talk to people and it's it's over I would say a longer period of time a lot of these studies they go in they review these however many people and I, I just think they, they don't take into account you know like a period of time that would be necessary I didn't read all the studies so maybe some of them were done over years I don't know but it seems like they go in they review a certain number of people and it's hard to know the factors in what like you know in a given month if you go in and review people uh, how things are going to be, where you're reviewing the people at. You know, in a city, for example, I would think that you would expect you'd have a lot more social mobility because maybe there's more job, more job opportunities. Things change quicker in a city. And so you'd probably find more of that opinion that, yes, things that, that they want change. Whereas if you come up to the countryside, the countryside, of course, is going to be slower. And so you might see, like I say, the old guard more firmly entrenched where people want traditional weddings. They want it. Uh, they want things to be a patriarchal, you know, with the man being the primary breadwinner. And when I've lived out in the country, that's where I live. That's kind of what I see is a more traditional setup. And I think that stands to reason where you look at the city versus the uh, the countryside. So. Yes, the city is going to change. Yes, the countryside is a little more entrenched, but I think the fact still remains that when you're considering Japan, it's socially going to change a little bit slower and slower than a lot of these reports that come based out of cities uh, would have you believe. So that's my thoughts in terms of how quickly our gender roles changing. Absolutely, they're changing, but not as fast as you might suspect for the other reasons that I've mentioned about being a monoculture. Um, what else? Uh, there was a, there's another interesting point here about gender roles and kind of like what's happening in Japan in terms of uh, I don't know if you call it sexual sexuality, but I think I think it'd just be basically uh, the rate at which children are being born. And a lot of these different studies say that you know the Japanese people are like pandas, <laughs> and you know they um, they're they're not having a lot of sex. They're the the the, uh, the birth rate for children is fairly low. But then again, I think that that's kind of a study taken in a specific place because I teach at schools and these aren't even high school yet, high schools yet, and the, the kids are horny as hell. All, they're, they're just like normal kids, surprise, that they're all looking at each other, they're wondering about their sexuality as they're getting older, you know, like closer to 17 and 18 and stuff. There's like cute little, you know, like guys running up and hitting girls and like showing affection in that way and stuff, and so they behave just like anybody else would in any other country that I've seen. The children act like children and they don't know that they should be less interested in their sexuality. They seem to be acting just like anybody else would, just like I was when I was growing up through it. So maybe at the higher end where you're looking at the, the birth rate in Japan, um, it is dropping, but I don't think that's to say anything of what's you know, the kids who are growing up now, I don't think the kids who are going to grow up and have the next kids seem to have less interest. That's just, that's me, I don't want to say ignoring the statistics that say that they have the lowest birth rate, but I just want it, I want it to be known in that idea that it's not like kids are being encouraged to have sex less. I mean, I think this is one of the, I think Japan is one of the largest consumers of porn in the world. Now, I know that that doesn't necessarily relate to birth rate, but it does show a degree of interest in sexuality, which is then, you know, probably going to lead to children and things like that. So I, you know, just, I, I kind of take the stance that these, these polls don't give a full picture of the human condition. Um, and I really think that sure they got a lower birth rate, but that could change on a dime. 
I don't think that you're going to see in Japan an inability for them to replace the next generation. If you look at it now, if you ask the Japanese about getting jobs, they say that it's really, really, really difficult. And when you look at a birth rate statistic that says that their birth rate is really low, that would show a concern for them being able to fill jobs. But if right now it's desperate for them to get them, then it kind of sounds to me like that would work well for them. In the end, they would, you know, if they desperately need jobs, but they're afraid that they're not going to be able to fill them, well, that's going to meet somewhere in the middle because all these people need jobs, and right now they find it really difficult to get them. So, you know, the phrase I'm so fond of here, the changing of the guard, is uh, is likely to happen and be beneficial, and they've not suddenly lost an interest in their sexuality. I can say that on the ground, that they're, they're still, you know, they're just like everybody else. They're just like everybody else, um, just as interested in the whole thing. So I think that even though they show a low birth rate, that that will not affect them. I think that they're going to either come out of that or it'll balance out or whatever just due to human nature. I don't think their human nature has changed in some way that means that they'll stop having children. The schools are all full and the schools are... There's more schools in Japan than I can believe compared to uh, where I'm from. I mean, I'm from Canada. <laughs> and, and I mean, considering the, you know, you could probably... The, uh, there's like 20 million people in Tokyo and Canada has like 37 million people across the entire country. So it's a little more spread out, but they're not lacking for kids. Certainly doesn't seem like it. So there's my thoughts on changing gender roles. Second to that would be the, uh, the, their birth rate and how that's, that's changing. Um, let's see. I think, uh, to ask the question about the, it was a good question he had earlier where he said, you know, is it, are the children embracing the change? Or are they, they reforming? Do they want something different? And I would say that they are reforming. That's how I would answer that one. I would say that as much as we, we value the, uh, those who have come before us, and I think in Japan especially so, um, they, they have a lot of, I guess, call it ancestral worship is not quite right, but they have a very, very deep respect for their elders here, uh, more so than you might find in a Western culture. I'm not saying that's good or bad, but it's just the way that it is. But any new young culture always wants to do things a little bit differently. And so I would say if things are changing, it would be more embraced by the younger generation, of course. You are going to get that really interesting older person who, who likes to see change and embraces it more easily, but it is more common that older people want things to be the way they were, and younger people want things to change. So, absolutely, I would say that the younger generation is interested to see this change that is occurring happen more so than the, the older generation. I think, I think that's a given, and I think that's in, in any culture, no matter what the setup is, we usually get used to what we're used to as we get older, and we want to hold on to that. That's just human nature, although it's not healthy in my mind. Um, but then the younger generation tries to shake things up and change things, and we continue to progress. Uh, so absolutely, the, young, the, the younger generation does does want this to change. Now, the final question, which I think is which which I think is interesting. That's why I said this is this would ruffle some jimmies. Do you think that Japan will someday be just as gender equal as Western countries, which don't really have any strong gender roles? I think a lot of people in Western cultures might argue that there is still strong gender roles in um, in uh, places like Canada and the U.S. I would agree with his statement. I don't think there's so much is, but there's still, you know, I, as much as I go against some statistics, there are statistics about, you know, like the, the, the pay rates for men being higher than women and stuff like that. Well, that never seemed to be the case for me. I could never nail down a job that had me paid higher. On average, I saw women being more employable uh, than myself. Um, it's probably my own fault. <laughs> um, but okay, to answer that question better than me just rambling there, do you think that Jap Japan uh, will have a gender equality eventually? I think that comes down to whenever we try and look and answer these sort of questions, we always want to give like a broad stroke answer as though we were all the same. Another issue that I have with statistics talking about the way that things will be. It, 
when they ignore individuality. Now, in Japan, I think in many situations, it could be just as gender equal. And I think now there's a lot of relationships within Japan that so see a gender equality where、uh, a couple doesn't see one or the other being、uh, above you know, their partner and they're, they're gender equal. Just because there's individuals that make up a society, and there are those with you know, a million different values within that society, and some of them recognize that gender equality, or at least to be equals in a relationship, is a good thing. But on the whole, more of a general average doesn't see it that way. So I guess the question could be do you think there'll be a greater average that lends itself towards gender equality? Absolutely, I think so. I think that just seeing each other in a relationship. Is a mutual partner, not that one is elevated above the other, is just more enlightened thinking. And I think the longer we survive and don't blow ourselves up, that we will continually move more towards that. The point comes up again, I think, that in Japan, where things change more slowly, on an average for the whole, it'll occur a little more slowly because it doesn't have to appease, like I say, a bunch of different cultures all trying to get in their opinions and feelings on everything. But it will happen as long as we don't blow our planet up because we'll move towards a more enlightened state. And an enlightened state would see that we, we're no better or worse. We're equal contributors with different,、uh, different strengths and weaknesses for each other. And so that would naturally start to happen, you know, whether it's Canada, Japan, or anywhere.、Um, you would see gender equal roles.、Um, And so that about rounds it up for those questions. It was a really interesting email to receive. I appreciate it. That was an interesting question with lots of effort, probably much more effort than I've actually put into this video. So I appreciate that.、Um, and that's it. So there are my thoughts on gender, birth rate, change in Japan.、Um, there it is. So if you enjoyed the video, please do like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. These are my thoughts. There'll be more of them. Um, and to my friend in Finland, thank you for writing me. If you've got any more questions, interesting thoughts, you know, fire me another email.、Um, I'm going to put at the bottom of this movie, this video, song recommendation. I sometimes do that. It's called Inconsolable. I was listening to it today as I was filing my Japanese lessons. It's a damn good song. It's,、uh, it's like a remix of kind of like, I guess it would be techno, but it's more like trancey, relaxed. Anyways, it'll be down below, so if you care to click that, check it out in the links.、Um, like I like to say, thanks for checking out my videos. Thanks for tripping with Dave. And until we meet again next time, world, ciao for now. Peace.